Welcome to Volvo Penta test facility in Gothenburg, which we refer to as Crossholmen. We are taking you behind the scenes to the location where all our marine products and innovations are tried and tested before they are launched to the market. This is one of the largest marine test facility of its kind. We have more than 30 boats and some of them are actually out on the water all year round. We also have a professional crew of boat test drivers working to ensure that we deliver the ultimate experience to the water. Typically in a year this test center can rack up over 5,000 hours of testing and the boats are out on the sea being tested more than 40,000 nautical miles. We have invited you today virtually to our test center here at Crossholmen to learn more about the assisted docking technology. We will have a demo by our experts how this innovative system works and we will also talk about the examples where we see that it will have an impact on the boating experience and this session we will run together with yacht builders. Asimut, Beneteau and Tiara. So join us now for taking an in-depth look at the assisted docking technology. So we are sitting at the backdrop of a very critical location. This is where the magic happens. In the waters around the test center, we try out all our products and marine innovations in order to ensure that they fulfill our easy boating philosophy. That's the driving force behind everything we do. So this is actually the place where we have given birth to some of the major innovations from Volvo Penta. The Volvo Penta IPS and the joystick technology. It's also here where we try out everything from concepts and ideas all the way through to actually do the final preparation before we launch a product to the market. And it's actually here where the assisted docking came to life. And I know you are very eager to hear more about the assisted docking, but I will start on a higher level with the vision and the ambition about boating from Volvo Penta. So with me today, I have Johan Inden. Welcome. Thank you very much, Marlene. <laughs> Thank you. You are the head of the marine segment. Correct. And I know that we always talk about easy boating on top of our mind in everything we do. What does this mean? At Volvo Fensa, we are all about providing a unique boating experience and make sure that more people uh, can go out and enjoy the fantastic environments like we have here, for example, the, the Gothenburg archipelago. So we want to continuously strive to lower the barrier of entry and make sure that people can enjoy these environments. And over time now, we see an increased desire to, to be here, to be out in these environments, which drives a continuous need for innovation to bring easy boating, but also uh, in regards to sustainability. Well, you mentioned sustainability being a key part of this experience. Where are we heading? Well, uh, we see uh, in our vision that we want to be a world leading supplier of sustainable power solutions at sea. And that, that is really putting the mark of, of what we are striving for in the future. And we're also part of the, of the Volvo Group. And the Volvo Group has lately committed to something called science-based target. That is making a commitment to being a net zero emission company by 2050. And as part of the Volvo Group, we are part of this journey. And, and at Volvo Penta, we have lately accelerated our ambitions in this area as well. 
which I know and I love because <laughs> I'm so excited about this, not only being a mom, but also, you know, you want this to continue also for the generations exactly. ahead. Yes. Uh, we talk about the future of sustainability, but I, do, I know we do a lot today. So what are we doing today? Exactly. Balancing the two factors of performance as well as fuel efficiency is in our DNA since, since decades, yeah. I would say. And one example of how we are working with this is that we've made a public commitment to the World Wildlife Foundation. It's called their Climate Savers Program. Mm -hmm. It means that we are publicly committing, for example, to a 2% redu uh, fuel reduction or fuel consumption reduction over any new product development. We are committing to endorsing and increasing the use of IPS as that has a lower consumption as compared to, to comparable installations and as well contributing to accelerating our electromobility efforts. So really making a public commitment towards sustainability and acceleration already in our history and for the future. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. And I think we can share as well that we got the re results from the Climate Saver just now, which exactly. been published. And we are actually exceeding, so we are better than the target we have, which I think is absolutely that fantastic. That is very true. And I think I can speak for both of us when I say that the marine community can expect to see more from us uh, in the area of sustainability going forward, right? Absolutely. We have a DNA of innovation and we want to move forward. And then sustainability is absolutely part, and as I said, part of our vision, yeah. what we want to achieve going forward. And speaking of innovation, we are here to talk about the assisted yes. docking technology. And I would like to hear, you know, why have we developed this? Well. We have a philosophy or a strategy, I would say, called easy boating. I touched it in the beginning, giving the unique experience and lower the, lower the threshold of getting out on the water. And, and this is really a, a natural next step in extending uh, our innovation platform. We launched this uh, assisted docking system first in January on the Consumer Electronics Show, which is typically held in, in Las Vegas, <laughs> but this time was done online. Yeah. And we got a lot of good feedback from that, including being a nominee to the Best of CES Awards, which made us really proud, of course. And th this system is all about giving the captain the next level of control and precision in maneuvering and driving the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if you translate it to taking down further the stress levels of docking your boat in a tight spot or in a crowded marina. And this translates back to the vision then of lowering the threshold of getting new boaters out, daring to test, daring to try, and making sure that more people can enjoy these environments. I mean, it's spot on right now, given exactly. the circumstances, more and more people are out on the sea, right? And, you know, we're starting to get nice weather here in Sweden as well. So exactly. many people come out to the water. Yeah. Exactly. And as you introduced uh, this place, Crossholmen, yeah. that was the birthplace of the IPS. Yes. Uh, we launched the IPS in 2005. Uh, the IPS drive, I should say, providing them uh, decreased fuel efficiency at the same or higher level of performance. Next year, 2006, we added the joystick, and that was the start of a continuous evolution of easy boating features. And assisted docking system, as we launch it right now, builds on the same platform. So it's a natural evolution, but really a, a leap of magnitude when it comes to this giving the captain control. So we're really proud to launch this right now. But speaking of giving someone control, I mean, I would, no, maybe not argue, but I would wonder, you know, why don't we go all the way with the self-docking, which we have already shown once in 2018? Exactly. We, we showcased that in 2018. And, and it really, what, what we learned from that, because we gained a lot of feedback from the market, from the customers, is that we are, with that system, we're targeting a, a pretty limited audience. With this solution, we want to have a broad launch, we want to have a broad touch to the market and make it available to more or less everything uh, based on our IPS platform. And it is also uh, directing the needs of the market right now. So we have a stepwise approach towards automation. We start with this assist, increasing the level of control for the captain. And then we see a continuous evolution to full automation. But that will take some time. So the stepwise approach is really what we're looking for. And I think maybe just, you know, everyone is doing it. The car industry is doing it. I guess that more sort of other manufacturers doing it. So mm. why, you know, what's unique with the Volvo Penta assisted docking? Well, well, first of all, it is all about this increased level of control. And, and if I would make an analogy, we talk about the passenger car industry, for example. If you, if you set yourself in your car and you want to drive straight ahead, you set yourself in the driver's seat, you put your hands on the steering wheel, you look forward, you push the paddle, and you move forward in a straight line. Mm. 
if you take the same situation in boating, you set yourself in the captain's seat, you put your hand on the <laughs> throttle, you set, you, you set your, your heading, and you start moving. Well, you will start off in the straight line, but then the dynamic environment, the, the, the waves, the wind, the current, will bring you in whatever direction, and you need to start compensating. Assisted docking system is all about automating that compensation, helping you run exactly as you intended. So you want to go in a straight line, you move in a straight line, and we help you compensate that automatically. That's just a fantastic change of how you can drive your boat. It's fantastic. I've tried it. It's really, really good. So then the question is, when can we expect this to come to the market? Uh, we are launching this now. So it's available from spring, but we're launching it again in a stepwise approach. So we start off in the entry level IPSs. We're targeting new boats and then we will spread it across the, the IPS platform towards the larger yachts. And we will also stepwise introduce it in the aftermarket. So during the next 12 to 18 months, it will be a stepwise extension across the product platform and a stepwise extension across the dealer network. That sounds like a good plan. Looking it forward is. to it. <laughs> Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Johan. And I think we are now stepping into the second chapter of this session. And I'm going to introduce to you Anders Turin and Ida Sparrafors. They are two of the experts that, experts that are being part of the core development of this system. And they are eager to share with you how the system works. So I would say over to you, Anders and Ida. Thanks, Malin. So Anders and I are now out here in our test boat right outside the test center. It's a Prestige 460 and it has the system assisted docking function activated. So if I drive forward here now and then I just release the joystick, we are actually going to stand still right in the middle of the dock with the water flowing around us. And while we are doing that, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce you to some of our favorite benefits and how the system really works. So let's start to talk about how assisted docking, what assisted docking really does. Assisted docking is a hybrid between automated and manual docking. It's semi-automated boat maneuvering. Assisted docking builds on the full integration from the propeller to the antenna. The integration of driveline the EVC system and the GPS antenna gives us the ability to make a function and make the boating much, much easier. The deep integration of all the details, the uh, GPS sensors, the steering, individual steering of drives, shifting, the IPS transmission, the engine, engine data and the human machine interface the full control of all of those details. That is what gives us the ability to now deliver a complete new docking experience and a new level of easy boating. And let us show you how we actually operate this system. So the semi-automation works with the control of the joystick. The captain controls the joystick and thereby decides the direction and the speed in which you are going. So if I start here by pushing the joystick forward, the boat, it's be like we are putting out a path in front of the boat and we are actually following that path. You can also see in the display where we have lines guiding us. The same thing happens if I go sideways. We will have sideway lines and we will maintain our heading <coughs> moving sideways in a control speed with the joystick. If I twist the joystick, I will rotate the boat around the fixed position that we have right now. Also, if I want to fine tune my position by just going a little bit to the side forward, or if I want to twist, I just tap the joystick and then I will get an indication that I have started and also when I've finished and reached my final position. Yeah, and the system's ability to help you while driving in straight lines, rotating both sideways and forward, that is really a great help. But there is more to it. I think that most boaters have been in a situation where they would like to have taken a pause, to take a break. Yep. And with assisted docking, you can do that. Just let go of the joystick and the boat will stop and stand still while you're thinking about the next move. It's a little bit like you could pause the movement of the water for a little bit. 
this is really a big change. Assisted docking also gives you the ability to drive really, really slow. And driving slow is something that is almost impossible typically while driving a boat. Yeah. You always have to compensate for wind and current by giving a little bit of speed. And all of those features we talked about now, all of those features together, this gives you the ability to drive the boat in a completely new way. Now you can drive boats one step at a time. And you and I, Anders, we are very familiar with how assisted docking works. We've been part of the full development process. So therefore we decided that an outside perspective would be good. And so we brought in two local boaters who hadn't tried the system before, and we let them try it out for the first time. And they have different levels of experience, but we gave them three different scenarios to complete. And now we want to share our reflections or their reflections on how the system works. <laughs> that boat, I'm gonna drive that boat. I am a boat person. I started out rowing boats when I was five years old. And after that, I have always had a boat. I have been on a lot of boats, but I have very little experience being in control of those boats. It's really intimidating trying to uh, maneuver around uh, in difficult situations. Just the idea that you might oversteer or go a little too far, hit somebody else's boat, that's definitely the, the moments that have been um, the most difficult for me. I am excited, I want to get on the water. I want to, I want to give it a go. To drive, now you just need to use the joystick and keep a constant uh, slow speed. That is the easiest way to drive. Then when you feel that you're ready, yeah. you just let go of the joystick and let the boat stop oh my God. and settle down. That's just... <laughs> Isn't we're, it not, we're not drifting. <laughs> no, not at all. We're just still. How incredible is that? So now what you're experiencing is that we are holding our position, even though we have released the moorings. I always need to like compensate stuff, but this time I don't have to. So that's why it's a little bit uh, unfamiliar right now, but it's interesting. The first thing that you want to do is to activate what we call side push. Uh, it's a function that lets you hold a position towards the dock. This is such a focus and such a precision, I must say. I can feel it that it moves really, really slow now. Uh, and I'm uh, coming closer to the, to the dock. And it's impressive that it's so with such a precision. But I think that once you start to get the hang of it, then it becomes much more easy. Uh, and just think like one step at a time, that's so important feels infinitely easier than the smaller boats that I've driven. It's just like backing a car. <laughs> that any time you can pause and let the boat stand still by just let go of the joystick. Normally coming up to a situation like this, it would feel okay. You have to come from the right angle. You have to think about how far you're going to drift. Um, how, how close to... It's a lot of things to have so in mind. So many things to think about. At the same time that you need to keep a good lookout for all the other things going on in the yeah. harbor. Wow. It's just so, it's so responsive. It's just so easy to, to take a break. <laughs> it was another boat coming out from the harbor, but it was fine. Once I released, then the uh, system kept my position, so it was no problem. Feels, uh, I would say, much easier than driving a car. It feels crazy to be on such a big boat with no experience and to not have felt anxiety. It's just been really smooth. 
The most unexpected part was just how intuitive it was. Um, it's almost hard to believe uh, just how easy it is that you let go and it stops. You, you push the lever twice sideways and you know it's going to move two feet. It actually turns what would be incredibly stressful situations into just a piece of cake. It's just mind blowing. Everyone can use it. It's so friendly. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner uh, or if you have a lot of experience. Everyone can use the system and it works perfectly. Uh, I would definitely like to have it on my own boat. Uh, it makes uh, docking so much easier and uh, yeah, everyone should experience this. So, there are really lots of takeaways we can do from those short tests. Absolutely. First thing that comes into my mind is how assisted docking offers something for every boater. Not only for the beginner, not only for the advanced users, but for anyone. Think about Lily, for example. I think assisted docking gave her the ability to do things she didn't even know she could do. It really gave her a level of control and a new level of easy boating. And what about Axel? He felt a little bit unfamiliar in the beginning. But that's something I think that you and I expected because he was an experienced boater, so he already knew how to operate the boat. Yeah, and as you could see, he quickly got used to it. And once he learned how to utilize the function, you could see how assisted docking enhanced his already good boating skills. And I think it was really evident when he let the boat do the compensation for him, and that's really the game changer. Yeah, and once you've tried that, you definitely don't want to get rid of the function. You quickly get used to it and addicted to it. Yeah, you want it. I think for me, the main highlight was really in the tight maneuvering phase. So you could see both of them really getting the accuracy, the precision, and the level of control that you have with the system. And when you're docking, it's so easy to otherwise overcompensate if there's a gust of wind or something like that. And I think that can happen to all levels of boaters, really. Yeah, like in the situation when Axel reversed into that really tight dock spot between the boat and the dock. Yeah, and what he could do now was really to move in small, short steps and really precise maneuvers to get into that very tight reverse. Yeah. Another takeaway, I think from both Lily and Axel, yeah. was how they appreciated the ability to stop and stand still, to take a break, to take a pause. And that really took their stress level down in a tricky situation. And that was really so evident when you saw the boat coming and driving right in front of them. The ability to actually release the joystick and solve the problem in that way was so comforting to them. Yeah, and that really gives the captain a great confidence being able to trust the system to stop and stand still and keep the boat in position while you're considering your next move. But of course, as a captain, you always need to remain in control, stay at the helm and keep a proper lookout. I completely agree to that, Anders. The boat is always considered to be underway when the assisted docking system is active. And now we are actually underway to finish up this segment. But before we do that, I want to show you one additional feature, which has been so appreciated by everyone who has tested the system so far. Yeah, let's do that. So now we are moving sideways to approach the dock. It's yeah, the final step. And with a gentle push of the joystick, we lay out the straight line on the side of the boat while we slowly, gradually goes towards the dock. And we keep that pressure. And now, when we are at the dock, I gently pull the joystick towards the side and I activate the side push here. And then I can actually release and I'm still in control of what's happening, but I'm holding that fixed position against the dock. Yeah, the side push is really a great help while you're about to put on your moorings. You can have full control of the, um, the power towards the dock and the system will keep you in position. This is tremendous help. I agree. I think it was really interesting to follow a couple of everyday boaters when they tried assisted docking for the first time. Yeah. And I think that really showed how assisted docking had something to give for all kinds of boaters. It took their stress level down, 
it increased their comfort and um, uh, control of the boat. I really think we could save a few arguments out there. I hope so. And I think what it really shows also is just like when we came out with the joystick function, this is something that raises the whole level of the industry to a new level of easy boating. And talking about the industry, we now want to have another outside perspective. So we invited some of our yacht builders and we want them to share their reflections with you now. Thank you, Anders. Thank you, Ada. You are brilliant as always. Now, the demo you watched was done and featured in a prestige yacht, a brand within the Benito group. And Benito has been a key role and played a key role uh, w throughout this whole journey, right? Yes, that's very true, Marlin. Benito has been with us since the early start of our marine automation journey and really highlighting the potential of in, so to say, further developing the easy boating concept in order to bring new boaters and great boating experience. And Volvo Fenta, we have a very long standing and strong relation uh, with the Beneteau Group. The Prestige Line and the IPS have kind of been built together and the Prestige Line has been a significant contributor in the, in the success of uh, IPS. Therefore, I'm, I'm so proud to, <laughs> in this call, be able to present to you Eric Strumberg. He's the Power and Motor Yacht Product Line Director, uh, director at the Beneto Group, and we have him with us live on the link from France. Yes, good to be there. Uh, I've been there to your test center many times. I would love to have been there in person. We would have loved to have you here, Eric. It's a beautiful day, but uh, thank you so much for joining this call. Uh, over time, Beneteau, as I said, have, have been kind of endorsing the, the, the need and the push to further enhance the easy boating experience. How do you think, how do you see this ease in boating contributing to attracting new people to boating? Uh, for, it's, for us, it's a key thing. As you said, uh, uh, I think the Beneto Group uh, and Volvo Penta have, have always shared a lot of the same values. That's why we've had a, a very strong uh, relationship over the years. Yeah. Uh, we, we like to speak about you know, accessibility, uh, which, of course, encompasses easy boating. It encompasses uh, uh, servicing, international uh, representation, all of that. So for us, anything that makes boating more accessible, more enjoyable, uh, is uh, for us a key part of our uh, of our strategy, and we truly share the the vision of getting more people out boating. How, how do you think uh, specifically the assisted docking system can contribute in that uh, in that vision? I think that you know it it all goes back to the idea of trying to uh, you know take the stress you know out of the boating experience to create that. Uh, that very enjoyable experience of being out on the water. Uh, as you know, uh, with the Beneteau Group, we were some of the first to go into uh, and adopt very largely the, the, the IPS uh, technology. Uh, that has been a, uh, a real uh, game changer for us, certainly within the prestige uh, brand uh, of our product line. And those, uh, to be able to add from the ease that we get from IPS, some of these more assisted features. And I totally agree that the world isn't looking for today exactly the the automated or the fully automated features. People still want to enjoy the boating experience. They still want to, to be in control, uh, but to be able to give them some tools and some assistance is exactly what uh, people are looking for today. Exactly. And, and there is a, I think we can say there is a trend towards uh, more attraction to, to boating. If you give it a glance ahead, what do you think are the, the critical factors to really uh, get those boaters in and, and uh, give them a great experience? Yeah, I think that it's a it's a very good point, and obviously we're living through times right now where we've had a, a real uh, peak in demand uh, for being out on the on the water and enjoying that time with friends and family, and that will only continue, of course, as the weather gets better uh, <laughs> yeah. in the northern hemisphere. So there is a, there's a big point uh, on that, and for us, if we want to capitalize on that in the future, we have to make the boating easy. We have to make that threshold, as you spoke about, uh, as low and as easy to clear as possible. But we also have to think a little bit about uh, how we are going to also uh, take care of these clients, service them, and give them the follow-up and the follow-through uh, that our industry uh, really needs to keep those people uh, in, uh, in boating uh, rather than going off and finding other activities. And I know, again, the, the international reach of the Beneteau Group uh, and of uh, Volvo Penta and their service network and their professionals around the world are key parts 
of keeping these people in, in boating after they've cleared that threshold, but we need them to continue and stay with us, grow with us and adopt the new technologies as we go forward. Thank you so much, Eric, for uh, sharing your thoughts on assisted docking at the present, but also giving this glimpse uh, into what it takes for the future. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. I would also like to say thank you so much, Eric, and thank you so much, you won. Uh, I hope and I, I, I know I think that this will actually bring a lot more people and open up new possibilities for people to actually come out to the sea. I'm, I'm pretty convinced about that. Thank you so much. Uh, we also have started actually to work with some uh, OEMs and uh, manufacturers around the world and we have started to see some initial reactions. So we will move into uh, Asimut, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, the Asimut Benetti Group has a, has a strong tie to, to Volvo Penta and we have a long-standing partnership uh, together with them. And they've, for example, been first out uh, with multiple insta installations of the IPS, and they are really an innovation driver on the market. So let's take a first glance at uh, the experience from uh, Alessandro Rossi. He's the CTO of the Asimut Benetti Group and Federico Ferrante, the president of Asimut Benetti Group in the USA, on their first experience when uh, getting their hands on the assisted docking system. Innovation has always been uh, in our DNA and uh, Volvo Assisted Docking is, uh, is just uh, another step towards a better product, a better experience, uh, a better way to use our products. Uh, so uh, at Azimut Yachts uh, our aim is to work in order to make uh, the customer experience the best possible. For Azimut Yachts, innovation and technology is crucial. Innovation is so important because it's part of our mission, that is to offer to our customer the most beautiful, technological and reliable yachts. Azimut Atlantis 45 is one of the first yachts where we installed the assisted docking from Volvo Penta. And I think it's a big step forward in maneuverability and easy docking of the yacht. I tried it today for the first time in my life and I was uh, literally blown away. And what this system does basically take completely away momentum. You, you remove your hands from the joysticks and the boat actually stops. In, in other words, corrects and stops the momentum. In this context of, uh, of a company which is extremely receptive uh, to innovation and is uh, always aiming uh, to change the status quo, to think out of the box, uh, assisted docking for us was really a no-brainer. At Azimut Yachts, we always want to see ahead. You know, we want to we try to understand uh, customer needs and uh, project that into the future in order to deliver ahead of time uh, you know, what a uh, customer will want. And uh, we also feel 100% that the demand from customers of new technology, innovation, new systems will be constantly increasing. This is, this is a loop which is not going to end. So together with us now, we have the uh, Asimut Benetti Group CEO, Marco Valle. Marco, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, live. And I uh, really has been uh, astonished by, it, uh, by, by, the, by this video, by your video, by the video also by Federico that was tested by himself for this great system. It's really great to see the reactions of uh, Alessandro and, and Federico and, and their experience of, of the system. Uh, as if they're Benetti happy, they will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And uh, you've all, the Azimut Group has always been at the forefront of innovation and really taking to heart uh, new technologies. Uh, how do you see this uh, system playing into your strategy for innovation going forward? But it's true the fact that uh, we have been uh, leading the market uh, and to be a leader, you have to introduce innovation, any kind of new technology. You mentioned before IPS system with the reduction of uh, consumption and we 
increase this uh, level of reduction consumption by introducing also the carbon fiber in all our uh, range. And uh, this uh, uh, system that to really introduce is the cherry of the cake. I can really guarantee on this. Um, I think that it would be the next level, as you said in your video. Yeah. So you think it can? You see it really enhancing the experience of the of the yacht owner, the the boater, right? But we, as a company, we have the duty to embrace any kind of a solution that can uh, increase the ease of use of the boat, as you said, mm. and. Uh, for a self-owned operator, let's say, self-operator uh, in, in, in the boating, I think this is the must. Uh, I believe that uh, newcomers, so the new uh, people with that uh, we can be a little bit stressed by the fact that uh, all the maneuvering can be difficult to, uh, to be uh, matched, to be faced. This is the real, the, the way to if not reduced totally, at least 80% of the barrier to the entrance. Right. And if you would, uh, Marco, if you would give us a bit of a glimpse uh, into the future on your innovation journey, what do you think are the important factors to, to continue building the easy boating and the experience for the, for the yacht owner? My point is uh, nowadays you have to consider uh, to people and planet. So it's important that everything that is related to the sustainability, as you said, you mentioned before, should be a, a, a key factor and a focus for all our uh, companies that work in this industry. Yeah. And uh, I believe that everything that is related to increase the sustainability and to increase the comfort of use of the boat uh, is the right direction for the next uh, five, ten days. Uh, sorry, years. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marco, for joining us in this. And I can only fully agree with you on, on what your vision is and what you think are the important factors for the future. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, thank you very much, Marco. And I only conquer what you once said. I love the people and planet. It's fantastic. So thank you so much for being part of our webcast and being part of our journey together. And thank you so much, you one as well. So let's see if we can make another transition and uh, move to the US. Uh, we have also done some in initial uh, test drives together with US-based Tiara. And I hope that I have my dear colleague Martin Bjuve with me here now, uh, taking over the role. And Martin Bjuve is president of Volvo Penta Americas. So uh, over to you, Martin. Thank you very much, Marling. Thank you very much, Johan. So good to be with you. Thank you for a fantastic webcast so far. Extremely energizing. Thank you. Uh, as as Marling said, I'm president for Volvo Penta of the Americas, and I'm in our studio here in Chesapeake. And I want to say one more thing to Marling and Johan and congratulate you. They actually have better weather than we do in Virginia today. <laughs> so congratulate you to you for that as well. Thank you. Uh, in, <laughs> in, a, in a minute or two, we will have Dave O'Connell, who is head of sales and marketing at Tierra Yachts with us. Uh, directly from Michigan. Uh, but first, I would say a couple of words about Tiara, and then we will watch a movie as well. And a couple of words about Tiara then. It's really an iconic brand here in the marine industry. Uh, it has a very strong heritage. It's a family business with several generations uh, working actively in the company. Uh, the president is Tom Slickers, uh, and he is a part of the family. And we recorded a video with Tom about the assisted docking a couple of weeks ago. And you will see that movie right now. Uh, and then we will be back in a couple of minutes together with Dave O'Connell. So enjoy this movie. So the experience for me is everything kind of slows down. And slowing down is actually not a bad thing. A lot of customers, they get anxious, they get excited, they get nervous, they got guests on board. So there's a little bit of I gotta perform. And I think this kind of makes it a much more calming experience. Once I get the boat lined up, then I, I can do this in a very slow way that keeps everybody else on board, very calm. DPS and its mechanism of attached to this feature 
has really given a lot of potential confidence to the customer during that phase. Probably what surprised me is the level of hold. Um, I, I wasn't prepared for that, being able to compensate for that much wind or that much current. So I think slowing it down and giving the customer the ability to factor out the waves and the wind and the current, things like that, I think is very, very favorable. It's when you go to a different dock or you go to a different marina or you go to a different area and you're not familiar with the conditions and I think that will begin to give the owner the confidence to say it really doesn't matter where I'm at. If there's a lot of current, if there's a lot of wind or the combination of both those, I'm still going to be confident that I'm capable of doing this. You know, the, the ability to calm people uh, during the docking and undocking is really, to me, uh, one of the experiences. That's probably the most uh, high blood pressure points of boating. This is the easiest potential docking scenario that there's ever been, and hopefully it's going to get better. Thank you for that, Tom, and, and welcome Dave O'Connell, uh, who should be with us directly from Holland, Michigan. Welcome, Dave. Good, yeah, good morning. A pleasure good to be morning. here, Martin. Thank you for joining us, uh, Dave. Thank you for hosting us a couple of weeks ago when we when we recorded this movie and uh, or this film, and you got a chance to to try the system as well. So so thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely, Dave. <laughs> Tierra Yachts, you're an early adopter, but also a launch partner with us for the uh, IPS product that we launched some 10, 15 years ago. Uh, you've been using the technology, and you have been using the technology uh, personally from the very beginning. Um, and Tierra is certainly uh, a part of the Volvo Penta success with the IPS. So thank you for that. How do you see that the assisted docking will continue evolving the boating experience that is already so unique with the Volvo Penta IPS system. How, how do you see that that will keep evolving the experience, Dave? Yes, you know, the, the partnership for us and Volvo Penta over the years has been tremendous. So as we, we entered into the IPS era and making boating that much easier for everybody together, uh, we transitioned to the DPS uh, technology that you guys have developed, and now we get to offer the assisted docking. So it just continues to evolve with Volvo Penta. As we say here, we want to deliver a delightful boating experience as you guys want to do an uh, uh, easy boating experience. So the relationship works very, very well together. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. And who do you really see is the typical Tiara customer that would embrace this technology, uh, Dave? All of our customers, Martin, you know, the, the idea to make this uh, simple um, because it's an integrated system from Volvo Penta, we have a high degree of reliability, uh, easy to install, which just translates to the delivery experience and then the consumer experience. So, you know, it's all about allowing our customers to enjoy the product. And that's what this is all about. Well, I'm glad that you say so. So what do you believe the boat owners can expect from the Volvo Penta IPS system now that we add the assistant docking functionality? What do you think they can expect, uh, Dave? Yeah, the, you know, all the videos and the comments I think have uh, articulated the benefits well. It's very simple. Uh, it instills confidence in our consumer, which is really important because we want them to go boating. We don't want them to be intimidated. And at the end of the day, that just means they're gonna have an enjoyable experience, which is what it's all about. Well, I love that. That is what it's all about, right? And, and we all go out boating to slow down, and this helps us to slow down. So exactly. that is really what it's about. Well, thank you so much, Dave, for joining us uh, today. We really appreciate the Volvo, the Volvo and the Tiara partnership, and we say thank you for your business as well. So thank you for that, Dave. All right. Thank you. We enjoy the relationship as well, Martin. Great, great. Thank day. you so much. Thank you so much. Marlin and Johan. Thank you from the U.S. and back to the beautiful weather at Crossholmen in Gothenburg, Sweden. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Martin. And thank, thank you, you so much, Dave. And thank you so much, all the invited guests. 
we have come to almost the end and we will have some questions here now. I have with me in the studio both Ida Andersen and Johan, so we will grab the opportunity and come with some questions that you have actually posted. And I think that one of the most common ones is what are the requirements? Well, first of all, you need a Volvo Panta installation with IPS. It can be twin, triple and quadruple installation, and it will be available for the full range of IPS from D6 uh, to D13. Uh, you will also need a joystick docking system and you will need a DPS antenna on the boat, the antenna for dynamic positioning system. And there will also be a need of a glass cockpit display for showing the HMI. Thank you. And that is about it. Yeah, yeah that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> if we then uh, think about, I know you've said it before, but can you repeat it again? One, when is this available? So we're doing this uh, step-by-step launch, uh, starting already now. Focus on the uh, entry-level IPS in combination with new boats. Mm. Then we're stretching across the range of IPSs, uh, mm. as Sanders mentioned, and we're also uh, going from new builds into the aftermarket. So during the next uh, 12 to 18 months period. We're covering, covering this broader area. That's really good. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> we have also received a question about uh, will it work with more of Volvo Penta's range or just the Volvo Penta IPS? Anders, do you want to take that one as well? Basically, it was a little bit my first answer. Yes, you will need a Volvo Penta IPS. So it will work on all the different IPSs, but not on the other drive lines so far. So far. That's good that you always add that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if we then speak about the Volvo Penta IPS, the question is, can I get it on an existing Volvo Penta IPS, Ida? I think that's been a target within the project, uh, and we've worked really hard to make that happen. And as uh, Yuan said, that will be in our next step and in the next phase. It will depend a little bit on how old your boat is, but it will be available back to almost 2012, uh, but with some requirements on the type of, of display that you have and also on the type of uh, antenna that you have. So with those uh, additions and potentially adding a, something to the joystick, it will actually be available also if you already have uh, a Volvo Penta boat. <gasps> So just confirming again the stepwise approach, right? Exactly. Yeah, we talk yep. about the stepwise approach and it feels like there are many people that want to have it and that's good. That's yeah. really good. That's fun to hear. I think yep. that's fantastic. Anything you would like to add now? No? No. It's fun this, right? Uh, it's so <laughs> good and it's so fun to be here <laughs> yeah. launching this because uh, putting yourself in a boat, testing it, you get this fantastic experience and we want to spread that. We want more people to get that smile on their face when testing this. Yeah, and I would actually like to add on to that and build upon it because we we are building maturity here now. We are learning and we want people to come with comments, reflections, questions along the way. So, you know, contact us. And if you want to read more about it, you can visit the volvopenta.com for more details and more information. So go there and take a look at it and come with questions and comments if you have them.